do not spread your resources and your energies on, on too many things in parallel. Focus on, on the best things and really focus then your energies on them and get them through your system fast, get to market fast. Welcome to Innovation Talks. Join us weekly as we discuss with distinguished industry guests how to refine and improve corporate innovation and new product development. Hosted by Paul Heller, Sofian Chief Evangelist. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Glad you could join us again. My guest today is Peter First. He's a managing partner of Five Eyes Innovation Consulting, and he has a lot of expertise in StageGate, Agile StageGate hybrids, fuzzy front end, and portfolio management, all the aspects that are necessary for innovation. And he's worked with many companies over 20 years uh, across a number of industries. He's also a lecturer on innovation management at the University of Applied Sciences in Vorarlberg. Peter, glad you could join us. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Paul. I'm happy to be here. And where are you joining us from? I'm joining here from Austria mm -hmm. in the very western part. It's near Lake of Constance in Dornbirn. Yeah, it's a beautiful area. Is it fall? Is it winter? Well, in between. Yeah. <laughs> so in the nights, it's quite chilled. So sometimes it's freezing. Sometimes it's uh, about four or five degrees Celsius. So we're preparing for a long, cold winter. Preparing. That's the, that's the correct <laughs> word. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good. Well, you know, I'm really glad you joined us. Your company, uh, Five Eyes, I wanted to ask you first what that name, if that name means anything. Are there five eyes? Uh, what that's about? <laughs> well, you know, that, that was a, an interesting part of founding this company about 20 years ago. Yes, creativity was one topic of us. And so we said, yeah, let's have a creative workshop to create our name. And uh, finally, this was kind of the result of it. The five eyes at that time have been five topics we, we wanted to cover. So it's all about innovation. And finally, most of the words even start with innovation. So it's, mm. we started with innovation systems, which includes, as you mentioned, the stage gate process, portfolio management, those things uh, you should have organized in a larger organization. But then we found out during uh, our work with customers and implementing those processes, um, we have innovation projects to support as uh, this is kind of the vehicle of, of innovation and, and the way of organizing it. So we added another eye, which was innovation projects. Then we figured out, well, there are no projects if you have no ideas. So <laughs> ideation is the third eye then, which is needed to, to have a, a holistic system there. And when we then started with companies finding new product ideas, uh, we came to this question, well, where should we search for? This brought us to innovation strategy, uh, which is the fourth eye. Mm -hmm. And the fifth one, that was a, a difficult one for us because we, we knew, okay, there are a lot of methods. And uh, I mean, a lot of them came from Bob Cooper, have been researched by him, uh, but also other people. But all those systems will not work if you do not have the right identity in a company. And we, we changed this word later on to innovation culture. So the first four ones is more how you can learn how to do it. But the fifth one is how you do it finally, Yeah. how you live it. And so about for about 10 years, we had no product on this eye. So when a company came to us, uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we tried to do it when we installed on it. A process but in the end we, we could not answer here what what you could do but this changed over time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah good thanks for sharing that i i've always wondered that about your company so now i know <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. you know. how did you get involved in innovation management well in fact it was um that i met bob cooper at some mm. day but this was on my very start of, of my career i was Doing my studies in Innsbruck, during summer I worked for this consulting company, and uh, there I met a colleague. This she's now my my business partner in Five Eyes Innovation, so it's Dr. Angelica Drea, and she was also just starting in this company, coming from university, and a friend of Bob. He was working at University of Innsbruck, and 
he was having one of his trips over the world and had a day free in Europe. So to make a long story short, this consulting company uh, I was working in summer just hired Bob for a day to make a public seminar. And this is where I met him. In fact, first I met his wife, then I met him. <laughs> so, ah, okay. And then this was the start. He had a lot of know-how to share and he was in search for a partner in, in the German speaking area. And so our consulting group uh, then started to work with him. And about two or three years later, we found Five Eyes Innovation Consulting, kind of a spin-off of this consulting group. I see, I see. You're not just in Austria, you're in Germany, you're, you're in the, the, the greater uh, German-speaking countries for sure. Where else? I mean, it's, it's Central Europe, but mm -hmm. our target market is German-speaking. We don't like to travel too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it costs a lot of time, but yeah. in the end, we, we are working in England as well as in Denmark, um, Holland, and Netherlands. So it's quite a, an area we, we cover, but uh, active acquisitions we do in a German-speaking area. Well, a lot of listeners are very familiar with the StageGate process and, and using it at some level of experience, maybe just beginning, very maybe very mature. But from your vantage point, how is that changing? How is the process, how is innovation in general changing? Hmm. That's a big question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Where do I start? Well, maybe one aspect I'm, I'm not getting tired in, in repeating that is a lot of people understand with StageGate something, some version of StageGate that was actual in the 1990s. So it's about the third book about StageGate, Winning at New Products of Bob Cooper. And they're still on, on this level, but the StageGate process itself evolved very much uh, during the last uh, 15 years or 20 years. So a lot of companies are no more updated in what stage yes, it is. Yes, right. When I observe, and I'm in a lot of companies and have a lot of in, in views into their process landscape, and what I recognize there is a lot of companies are living a stage process, but they lost the gates somehow. So the gates are maybe some milestones, but no more really decision-making points. It's like, uh, have you done everything you should? Yes, okay, then go forward. But uh, the intention of StageGate for sure is different. So yeah, losing this gating thing, which is very important on, on the process, this is one of the observations uh, I saw. And, and uh, this is what, where I position myself saying, hey, it's more about governance. It's more about risk management than planning stages or having long checklists in what could you do in a stage, yeah. in which stage. So I think here some knowledge almost got lost as, as people are, even in, in universities. By the way, this is the way why I am a lecturer, because I visited once a lecture of a professor there, and then I said, well, wait a moment, you're wrong. <laughs> this is not right what you're teaching there. Uh -huh. I could do that better. And so he said, really? And uh, there I was. I had <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This additional thing to work. No, the, the point is... Um, it's, it's more about risk management, it's about governance, as I understand StageGate, than on making proposals of what should be done in the stage. Yeah. I've often said it's a risk management methodology as opposed to a, a project management methodology. And I, I have watched a lot of confusion, especially as uh, project management professionals got more involved. As tools were brought in, some of those tools, like the one Sofian has, are StageGate focused, but some are more project management focused. And uh, I remember once talking to a very large PLM company who said, yeah, we could do StageGate in our product. And I took a look at how they did it. And it was exactly as we said, it's just stages, stages and, and work deliverables in stages. And the gate was just a milestone, a point in time. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think uh, a lot of companies did have lost the gates. And uh, I'm really glad to hear you say that. Um, have you found that you can help companies get back and find the gates again and get some success with them? Or Definitely. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, let me continue the story before yeah. because 
about six, seven years ago, this new topic of Agile yes. came up. And a lot of people have been very excited about it. And I had the feeling, okay, it doesn't matter what you do in a company as a consultant. The important thing is that Agile is somewhere in the name of it. <laughs> yeah, right. And people understood really different things here. Uh, I mean, I was discussing with, with responsible people for innovation uh, in a lot of big companies. And they said, like, we are Agile as we are asking our customers what they want. We have voice of customers, so we are Agile. Another one said, we are Agile as uh, we have learning cycles or we have this kind of retrospectives. So, um, and there's still a lot of people understand different things of what Agile means. Uh, for some, it is uh, a mindset more than anything else. Others say, if you don't have Scrum, you're not Agile. Right. And this made it a bit difficult because uh, suddenly the old, and they call it waterfall, and to, to claim it here, StageGate is no waterfall system. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> And, and it's all the same for them. So for Agile, right. for these Agile religious people, the old world was just forget it, do it a new way. We have um, the one tool that fits everything. And that was difficult to tell people, wait a moment, stage gate is not outdated. It's something different. And at, now I think um, three, four years ago, the, the community started to change a little bit, understanding that there's not one or the other. It's both. You need the structure, you need the, the risk management system with the gating and also with portfolio management to understand which projects to do and also to stop the weak ones. But when it comes to how you operate projects, then we are in the Agile world. And then Agile brings a lot of benefit. And this is the point to understand or sort out where does it make sense. The other aspect for sure is that Agile is maybe not the right project management method for every project. So the next topic was then too, okay, maybe for the big projects, for kind of the VUCA projects, volatile and, and ambiguous projects, those with a lot of risks and uncertainties, their Agile is, is a wonderful tool to really get them done and get rid of a bit of the maybe too structured stage mm -hmm. game touches that the companies had for these big projects. Here we are, and I also see, and that was interesting, especially in Germany, there are some universities who do a lot of research on agile stage game, or maybe more agile than stage game. But what they figure out is that most companies have these kind of hybrid systems and work quite well with them. Yeah, when you... You mentioned StageGate is not waterfall, but I've heard some people suggest it is. So can you explain that, that comment? I can. Waterfall method itself comes from software development. And the logic behind it is that you first understand what you need to do and you define it and then you program it. That's not completely wrong, but it, it gets into difficulties when you're when it's hard to define first what it should be or what the requirements are, as long as nobody can say beforehand. So this is where the strength of Agile starts when, when the customer only understands what he wants when he sees it or when he can try it. And there you have these iterations, these loops. Waterfall is, I think, a strong method when it's clear what exactly you need and then you define it first and then you program it. So one after the other. What people now mix up with StageGate is the typical description or the typical picture you have from a, from a StageGate system is phases one after the other. So well, for example, the classical one, um, five stages, five gates. And people say, okay, first you have to do um, scouting. Yeah. Okay. When you're done, then you get to the next phase. Uh, you do like a business case. When you've done this, you go to development and then you start developing and so on. So uh, they see, okay, it's all one after the other. The point is, but th this is what they don't see. Um, in software development, you start with the process in development. And these early phases of understanding what you need to, to build up a backlog in, in the agile world or to do this requirements engineering, um, 
this is not part of their process or not of all processes. So they see, okay, there are phases one behind the other. This must be a linear process one after the other. Yeah. But the aspect that you do not know what to do in the, at the very beginning of a, of a project and need to first understand what is the project, where to go, who is the target group, should we do it, does it pay off and so on. These are phases that are not well known in the software world. And therefore, yes, they, they, do, they see the picture and say, oh, it's linear, it must be a waterfall. And, and I think that that's the main aspect of it. And the other aspect, uh, that is not understood. We, we're talking here for product innovation, not only for software, but mostly hardware, or at least part of it is hardware. And with that, within a phase, you have a lot of different aspects to do, which some can only be done in a linear way. I mean, uh, you first have to produce something that you can test it afterwards. There are maybe methods, digital world, like uh, simulation, so on, you could do it different, but finally, uh, I'm just working with um, a company that are building falls for also for outdoor usage. And of course, they have this weatherability topic, and you cannot simulate this. You have to put them out in the weather and wait six months right, and right. then see what happened. And you cannot do this without the product. So... In, in this hardware world, there are some things you have to do one behind the other, and you cannot do it too simultaneous. Yeah. I think certainly the regulatory aspects as well. As well, definitely. In Sofian, we're a software shop. That's what we are. And we, mm -hmm. we do the Scrum methodology without a doubt, right? But we know that outside of that, we have to make sure that for each release, we understand what we're trying to accomplish, which customer problems have we have we solved, where who's going to validate it, what platforms are we going to continue with, what which ones might we drop, what support for maybe a certain old version of Microsoft Office. So there's a lot of things we have to do all the way up front, including developing our our main message. Right, you you write your. Uh, you write your press release right up in the front. So the, the stage gate process helps us organize all that thing that has to happen outside of Scrum. And then when we go to launch it, it's, okay, does our sales organization understand it? Is our support organization ready? Have they been trained? Is our marketing organization ready? You know, have, do they have the materials? The materials match actually what we build. Are we aligned? Uh, so the, again, on the back end, there's all these things. And uh, so for us, it, it really is very important that we have something wrapped around our Scrum process. And uh, mm -hmm. it, StageGate works well for that. And, and Peter, what I always found fascinating is in the original five-stage model, mm -hmm. there's a stage called development, right? That's it, development. And, and it doesn't say how to develop. It doesn't say, you know, what to develop. It's It says maybe what you need to have look at when you're coming out of development so you know you're ready to actually launch it to the market but but this development it doesn't prescribe how a company does the actual engineering does it it does not yes you're completely right but i think that the point is that it's so different depending on which industry you are when, when you have a look at the origins of, of stagegate uh, what bob cooper and his colleagues started at the very beginning was they, they had about two thousand projects and studied which ones of them are more successful than others. And they compared it to the success of the company with innovation. So fi finally, they, they, they learned from projects how they were done. And wh what they got out as a result have been some correlations of things a project team is doing to the success of the project. And I guess a lot of aspects around development have been figured out and could be identified as, okay, this is how the best performers do. Uh, on development itself, maybe not that much. Right, right. I mean, aspects like, for example, do the spiral development means um, go out to the customer at least once per stage. In, in development stage, maybe two, three, four times. So th this is one of these success factors built in the stages to say, I cannot tell you how you develop it, but I can tell you 
develop it, go out to the customer and ask him if, if it's good or if he would change something. Maybe this is one of the reasons, um, as it's so different how companies or industries develop things, that there is no common way of how you do that. Right, right, right. Well, let's talk a little bit about portfolio management. So what are some of the challenges you're seeing companies, if you think from a scale of 1 to 10, 10 would be very mature, really have it figured out, working well, and 1 is maybe just just not doing it or hardly doing it at all. Where on that scale do you see companies? Is it is it are they mostly mature or are many companies still trying to just start portfolio management? I would say in average I see it three, four, no more. But this has also to do with the understanding of what portfolio management is. I mean, we, we have this mixture of product portfolio management, which is quite established in a lot of companies very well. But uh, project portfolio management, a lot of people or a lot of companies rather understand like multi-project management, which means, okay, we have several projects going on. We understand how many that are, which ones they are. And um, yeah, that's it. I think one of the biggest troubles or, or problems uh, companies face is information. They just do not have a good information base, which leads to, to the conclusion um, we couldn't uh, trust in in what we get as a uh, portfolio data. Right. So how could we do good decisions on something we do not trust? Mm -hmm. And this is when, when I work with companies on this field of portfolio management establishment, I mean, we become typically from the top understanding what is the, the purpose of portfolio management, which is kind of a, a link between a strategy and the projects. And I mean, there's this nice sentence of Bob Cooper. Where he says, strategy becomes real when you start spending money on it. And this is exactly where portfolio management, together with Gates, by the way, make the point and, and are very valuable instruments in the system. And if they are missing, yeah, you might have lost touch between the projects and the strategy you initially had. Yeah, so so you're out there working with companies to help them understand these factors, help them create better processes, new processes, help them learn how to do portfolio management or to do it better, improve what they have. Uh, you mentioned fuzzy front end as well. You're doing work there. But you also do something I think that's very interesting. You actually uh, supervise. You've done this. You've supervised innovation projects the entire way through from, from front to back. You've come in and, and helped companies do it as opposed to just define how to do it and, and walk away. Can you tell me a little bit about that type of, of involvement? For me, but as personally, what I really love is to to accompany organizations in the birth of great new product ideas and then seeing them grow into the stage gate system. Uh, so I really love, and I just came from a workshop where we, where we did kind of, um, there was this initial idea. It's a rough, maybe not too concrete, not, not too elaborated idea. And the next step then, this is early phase, is then to massage this idea, to mature it, to something we call then a concept. And there's so much, so many opportunities in changing this idea at that stage, get interesting things on, maybe work on the business model. So that's really something I, I love to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> when there's a lot of, um, a lot of freedom of, of make an idea really better than it was before. And then getting it into, into the system, like having a, a scoping phase, for example, and then getting first facts nailed down on, on, on this idea, understanding, okay, this hypothesis was wrong. <laughs> so what does it mean for the idea and, and going on? Yeah, up to build business case, which includes a lot of interesting aspects, like really going out to the customer, to the market, understanding where their point of view is, um, but also understanding competition and so on. I mean, I cannot contribute too much on that because I'm no expert in any industry as I'm rather broad, but I, I have a lot of methods so I can bring in methods how to do things. Uh, I support teams rather there in, in 
proposing why don't you use this or I have seen at another company or at another product this kind of business model. Why, why don't we think in this direction? This is my my supportive aspect there. To be honest, when it goes to development, there's no no more. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> not much things I can do or I can. Yeah. Right. So often then it it goes down. So um, my my effort goes down and. Of course, I'm interested in what's going on, but more or less, that's it. And towards the end of a project, that's one of the weaknesses we see in a lot of processes that companies and yeah, I'm rather working for companies that are technical oriented. They're good in developing. They're good in this transfer to production, but they're not too experienced in launching. So they, maybe they invest, um, if they invest a million into um, the development of a new product, they might then invest uh, 80,000 into market, yeah. <laughs> which is ridiculous. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but this is kind of their way of thinking. The effort goes into the development. And there are sometimes, I mean, I, I, I'm not able to change whole systems in, in a company like that and disbeliefs, but... I try at least to to focus on launch and to really plan it and understand it, that people need to be educated, especially sales salespeople. I mean, you cannot come up with a new product. And this is an example of a customer. They're a machinery builder. And I mean, this topic, they, they did this project, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. They tried to bring in some of the digital world in, in predictive maintenance topics. So they had a small box with a lot of sensors and then some CPU and, and collect the data. And you could have an old machine and you would just add this box and then you had at least some information that could help you to do predictive maintenance on your machine. And we had a post-launch review after about one and a half years being in the market. And so the product manager showed up in front of the gatekeepers and they asked, well, how did we do with this project? And he said, well, not too well. We sold one for a half price. And uh, everybody was a bit stunned. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we invested 300,000 <laughs> or whatever in this project. You sold one for 5,000? Um, yes. And then we, we figured out what the problems have been. And we found out, well, there was kind of a, an email to every salesperson there's a new product, go out and sell it. But all the salespersons are technicians. I mean, uh, physical technicians, they, they sell machines. They understand right. the machine. They understand steel and for sure no, no electronics and no software. So they just did not feel safe selling this because they could not answer any question on that. So nobody told the customer they have this new product. Just to be on, on the secure yeah. side. Right. And not not being asked uh, not being asked difficult questions. So, what they completely missed out is to get their sales into the boat, and educate the sales first. And this is what what we try to then kind of uh, motivate the project teams to to get this done right. Yeah, the importance of launch. Yeah, and I guess it very much depends on the industry. I know there are some industries where the launch costs way more than the development, right? For oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, everything in, in B2C, for sure. Yeah, some other industries too in B2B, but a typical machinery builder or something like this, maybe not. Maybe it's not a mistake to do so. Well, this is a fun conversation, Peter. Um I, I just wanted to ask maybe maybe one more question. If you were to give one piece of advice to somebody around innovation, is there one? <laughs> what would it be? There are three. It's focus, it's focus, and it's focus. Aha, okay. Yeah, that's my advice. Do not spread your resources and your energies on, on too many things in parallel. Focus on on the best things and really focus then your energies on them and get them through your system fast, get to market fast. That's maybe maybe more important than all the other things. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, we, we see a lot of projects struggle when they're going too long. They're, they're too late on the market. Uh, maybe they're no more new when they're on the market. And sometimes projects are not proceeded well, which is also a cause of not enough resources, which finally goes back to, yeah, we have not focused the resources. So a lot of mistakes come from that. And if I had to reduce it to that. Yeah, great. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I do have one more question. In preparing for this, I was told to ask about your two-day teaching job. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the funny, I already told you how I get there. Uh, yeah. Because of uh, telling the professor that I'm more professional on this than him. Yeah. And I was, I was really surprised how you reacted to saying, that's cool. Come here. You have you do no, it. An <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> you do it. Um, yeah. The other funny thing about it was at the moment and for the last 10 years, I, I teach students that are doing this study besides their job. So they are maybe between um, 25 and, and 40 years old, and they're all experienced in something. When I started on, on this university, I had these students that have been 18, 19 years old, never worked in their life before, uh -huh. sitting there coming directly from school. So I explained them StageGate and said, you know, StageGate is a system that helps to organize when has who in the system talk to whom. So how to organize the information flow and you bring together the right people at the right time that they figure out how a new product is done. And I tell that and then I look in their eyes and they're big eyes and what is he talking about? <laughs> so, um, then some student just, uh, sorry, why aren't they just talking to each other? <laughs> And I said, good question. Um, I don't know, but believe me, they don't. <laughs> that was kind of okay. Um, it's, it's, it's completely different when, yeah. when you have somebody who's never been working in yeah. the environment. Nobody who is working in whatever R&D, product management, operations, would ever ask this question. No, that's they right. They know it. <laughs> <laughs> but... The funny, but also the critical aspect of this question is that it seems to be necessary to really have a lot of systems to do very simple and logic mm -hmm. things. And maybe that's, that's one of the aspects those processes are, I mean, they're, they're in fact, they're just logic, a stage gate process, but it, it doesn't matter which one it's agile. It's just logic, how you would do that. Uh, even waterfall. I mean. I have the theory, I cannot prove it, but I have the theory, it wouldn't matter what system or what method you use, if you would use it as it is thought uh, it should be used, right. if you would really do it like it would, should be, it would be successful. So most methods or most systems fail of the missing discipline of really doing them right. I agree with you there. And so you, yeah. you just run one method after the other, like this one will bring the Holy Grail and nobody really brings in the discipline to really follow the rules. And then, yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. Next method. Try another one. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I think there's some, some foundation to what you're saying there based on my experience as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Peter, this was really enjoyable. I'm glad you could stop by and, and visit with us a little bit. If people want to find out more or follow you or track you, or, or what's the best way that they can they can uh, get in contact or, or follow what you're doing? Well, there's one aspect uh, which I'm, I'm trying now to get deeper into is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And having there my profile, and I try to, to post two times a week something, some ah, content, maybe, which means some thoughts about what I'm doing, what I'm seeing with the customers. Um, so it's a mixture of uh, knowledge I share there or expertise and, mm -hmm. and things I came across <laughs> during the week. Yeah. So this might be, so link with me. I'm, I'm happy. Great. 
yeah. be linked. Or of course, I mean, you may share my, I don't know, email address. Or, yeah, we'll, or... we'll share some information in the show notes that people can, uh, can get in touch with you. But especially the LinkedIn, if you're, if you're uh, writing things there, that's, that's a great way to, uh, to follow what you're doing. So, well, thanks again. Thank you really very much. I really it. enjoyed and, uh, it. I did too. And uh, I hope we, uh, we talk again soon. So have a great, uh, great rest of your week. I know it's almost over for you. And to all you uh, people listening, thank you very much. Glad you joined us. We do this for you, and we're always uh, seeking to understand what type of things you'd like to hear about, learn about, so you can always uh, contact us and uh, certainly request things or, or tell us what you think, good or bad. Uh, we want to we do the right things for you. So I wish everybody a great week, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye for now. Thanks for joining us this week for Innovation Talks with Paul Heller. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, or wherever you listen to podcasts. For additional information on today's topic, check out sophion.com, S-O-P-H-E-O-N.com, where you will find plenty of innovation-centric content and corporate best practices. If you'd like to discuss anything with Paul or would like to get in touch with the show, email us at talks at sophion.com.